10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 68. Hey, people, and welcome back to episode 68 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. If this is your first time ever joining us, my name is Nick Manella. And on this show, every single week, we uh, seek to provide you a short and concise and informative jazz lesson complete with downloadable PDF, which you can find at our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com. That's the number 10minutejazzlesson.com. So welcome back into a brand new episode. Before we jump into today's meat and potatoes, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we are so close to releasing our first ever course for our Inner Circle uh, membership. So if you're interested in supporting the podcast, which we would really super appreciate, um, just go to the Inner Circle page on our website and sign up. It's only 10 bucks a month, and we're actually turning that website into a full-fledged lesson website. We used to just do transcriptions, but uh, we wanted to make that that subscription even more valuable for you by starting our very own video courses and posting them for Inner Circle members. So we're just finishing up a major triad course, and that's going to be live within the next week or so. So if you are on the fence about supporting the podcast, we we would really appreciate it, and now it's going to be better than ever. You are really going to have access to a lot, a lot, a lot of educational material. All right, let's jump into today's episode. So today's episode is about one of my favorite topics, which is rhythmic displacement. This is something that I worked on all the way back in high school, and I still do it to this day because it just benefits my playing so much. So when we talk about rhythmic flexibility, that is literally one of the most important things that you can get good at when it comes to improvising. You know, having your harmonic stuff together, your melodic stuff together is all well and good. But if you don't have rhythmic flexibility and um, a really nice sense of rhythm and where notes fall in the measure, your harmonic stuff is not even going to matter because it has to swing first, right? So we want to develop that rhythmic flexibility by working on short phrases that we're gonna move all over the measure, all right? So if you look at the uh, first example on this week's PDF, you're gonna notice that I'm just gonna take a short three note phrase. So in this instance, it's just a quarter note followed by two eighth notes. So dot, do, dot. And I want you to play it like that. I don't have any uh, articulation marked in, but if you just remember in your head, dot, do, dot you're gonna be in really, really good shape on this. We, we wanna play that first quarter note, very short and uh, disconnected, dot. Then we wanna play the second, or the first eighth note, we wanna play that a little bit more legato. And then when we're playing swing music in general, the last eighth note of any eighth note phrase is generally played uh, short and disconnected, so another dot. So then you get dot, do, dot. All right, so if you look at the exercise, what I'm basically doing is the first one, I'm starting it right on one, three, four, dot, do, dot. Now in the second measure, I'm taking that same exact rhythmic phrase and I'm displacing it by one beat. So instead of playing it on one, I'm playing it on two. So three, four, one, dot, do, dot. Same exact thing, shifted over a beat. So then, logically, in the third measure, we're going to shift it over one more beat. So now that same phrase is going to happen on beat three instead of beat two. So three, four, one, two, dot, do, dot. And then finally, and this is going to be one of the harder things that you run into, is we're actually going to play this phrase across the bar line. So we're going to start on beat four and play it into beat one of the next measure. And that's where the exercise really starts to get hard. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, dot, do, dot. Now that's not tough when we're simply doing it over one chord or doing it as an exercise, but that becomes a really, really difficult thing when you're actually playing this over a tune, right? Because what if the chord is changing? 
Well, you have to play the first note in that phrase in one key, and then you have to play the subsequent two eighth notes over a different chord change. That's where it really starts to get difficult, and that's where you're probably going to have to spend the majority of your time working on this. I'm going to play this on saxophone so you get an idea of what it sounds like on an instrument with a play along going. So you can hear it actually gets a little bit confusing, right? Where you're finding yourself having trouble finding beat one. That's kind of the whole point of this, right? Is that if we want to obscure beat one or we want to play something that's a little bit more unpredictable, we can do that because we have that rhythmic flexibility. So if you look at example number two, now it gets a lot more difficult because what we're doing is we've shifted the quarter note to an offbeat. So now in effect, we're doing everything on the offbeat of where it was before. Now we're still doing the same thing with displacement, so we are still going to move it all over the measure, but now every time we play it, it's gonna be off the beat. So now in measure one, you have this phrase, two, three, four, one, da, do, da. So you could hear that completely changes the game. It, it changes the feel of that phrase so much. Now in measure two, the quarter note comes in on the and of two. So three, four, one, and two, da, do, da. Right? Same phrase, sounds totally different. Now in measure three, we're not going to play it until the end of three, and again, this phrase is going to cross the bar line, so this is going to be the tough stuff. So three, four, one, and two, and three, da, do, da. Right? So let me play that for you on saxophone so you hear what it sounds like. This one might be a little bit harder to keep up with, but do your best. See if you can find where one is in every measure. Count along with the play along so that you can find where one is every single time it comes around. And the first couple of times you might lose it, but that's okay, keep trying, keep trying. All right, here's what it sounds like. Cool, so that's the off the beat syncopated version of the same phrase. Now, I wanted to say something before we keep going. This isn't too hard to do on one note. So you might be thinking to yourself like, oh, I'm not gonna have to work on this for very long at all. I can do this already. The real difficulty with these exercises comes when you actually try to make them melodic, right? So actually using melodic phrases instead of just playing it on one note. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. That's where the real difficult stuff is going to come in. I remember doing this on one note when I was in high school. Oh, this is easy. I got this no problem. And then I tried to do it on multiple notes, especially when I was crossing the bar line. It became a much, much, much more difficult thing. So my order of op my suggested order of operations for you would be, you know, do these on one note, um, get comfortable with them. Then you're going to do exercises number one and number two on different notes. So you can use a one chord play along like we're doing here, that's totally fine, but try to use melodic phrases <clears throat> instead of just, you know, hammering that one note because that's going to get old fast. So the third exercise this week is doing just that, but it's kind of a double whammy because we're, we're mixing up all the displacements of the rhythms, including on the beat and off the beat, and we're trying to do it melodically. So it's kind of both uh, goals in one exercise. You may not be able to do this right off the bat, and I that's fine with me. Take your time, practice it, really, really work on it before you try to do something like this. What I'm really trying to do with this third exercise is just demonstrate to you ultimately what you wanna be doing, where you wanna have that, that flexibility to do whatever you want, both melodically and rhythmically. Um, 
But yeah, just don't get ahead of yourself and don't worry about it if you can't do it right off the bat. Um, you guys know it takes time to do everything, everything when it comes to playing jazz. So I'm going to play exercise number three for you so that you can hear what it sounds like with a little bit of melodic stuff mixed in and the uh, rhythm displaced all over the measure. So listen to all that different stuff that you can do with just a three note phrase. And this is kind of the beauty and the really, really frustrating part about being a jazz musician is that you can really run yourself through a wall with something as small as a three note phrase. But the beautiful part is that you can explore so many possibilities with only three notes, right? So take your time on this stuff. If you've never done it before, or if you feel like your rhythmic concept is a little bit weak, this is going to take you a long time. But I, I guarantee you there's not much better than you could work on than this, especially if you're trying to get your rhythmic stuff together. Um, this stuff is the most important thing you can practice. All right? Shoot me any questions that you might have, 10minutejazzlesson at gmail.com. I've been hearing from a lot more of you. I, I love hearing from you guys, love hearing about where you're at in terms of your development, um, things that you might want to hear on the podcast, uh, episode ideas. Who do you want us to interview? We just came out with our first interview episode last week. Who else would you like to hear on the show? Uh, definitely want to tailor this towards you guys, the faithful listeners. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in each and every week. And we will see you on Monday with the Motivation Monday podcast. Have a great week, everybody.